Pro Image is an incredibly interesting film stock, but because of the name and the branding that comes with it, it faces an unwarranted amount of scrutiny. The use of the word Pro and it being labelled on the box as a Kodak professional film, or whilst not being referred to as a professional film by Kodak themselves, puts it in a bit of a confusing spot. And half the reviews that you find online call it a professional film stock, and the other half call it a consumer film stock. Which brings up the question, what exactly is a professional film and how is it different from a consumer film? Personally, I don't care. I find these arbitrary definitions to be a bit silly. As far as I'm concerned, film is film, and if it serves the function and gets the job done, then it's as professional as it needs to be. But maybe it means something to you because it certainly does to quite a few of these reviewers. And to discriminate between professional and consumer film stocks, they use a bunch of different factors, beginning with the formats that the film is manufactured in. For the case of Pro Image, it's only made for 35mm, there are no medium or large format options. Which leads to some people calling it a consumer film, because apparently professionals can't shoot 35mm. Sure. Others cite the grain as a marker for a professional film, but for me, really, if the grain doesn't get in the way, then it's good enough. And finally, I noted that there were quite a few who used the price tag of the film stock to decide whether or not it was a professional film. And to those people, I say, get over yourself. Um, and also, if you want to buy a $1,000 roll of Ultramax, please leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll send you my PayPal details. Trust me, it, it's totally professional because it'll cost you a lot of money. But yeah, jokes aside, the idea of professional or consumer doesn't really matter to me personally. What matters is getting a great image, because after all, Kodak suggests using this film for portraits or social events with people in it, so portraits, really. I took these on my Canon Autoboy Tele and my Canon EOS 3000, and there'll be a bit of text in the corner just to tell you which camera I was using. As ever with Kodak, it's a touch warm, but not offensively so. A lot of people describe it as a hybrid between Portra and Ektar, and I have to agree with that. It's got that soft contrast and excellent color reproduction, just like Portra, but the image, like Ektar, is much more saturated, but not at the cost of ruining those skin tones. It's a halfway point, really. And as far as grain goes, it's pretty good being a 100 ISO film. It's not quite as fine as Ektar or Portra 160, but I'd say it's about the same level as Portra 400, which by all means is good enough. And going back to that whole professional discussion, Portra 400 is a professional film stock. I found that I quite like the images, just a little bit overexposed. I was metering at ISO 64 on my EOS 3000. And metering at 64 ISO on my SLR was a bit tricky because that's not much light. And in that studio scene, we were using continuous lighting that at times wasn't bright enough. And whilst the images that I shot a little bit underexposed still look cool, I personally don't really want to go for that look. on my point and shoot, when it was darker I did use flash photography, of course I had to shoot at box speed. And for the role that I shot on my SLR, I was lucky enough to have the experience of scanning it myself on a Frontier machine. And that experience of scanning it myself really solidified my idea of 
shooting a bit overexposed because there's really so much more detail that can be preserved without turning it into a mushy mess of an image. So yeah, those are actually my final two rolls of the four that I shot in making this video. We're starting from the end because these final two rolls that I shot were really to follow the recommended style of shooting as advised by Kodak. But the first two rolls I shot in a very different style over about four or five months. And they serve to highlight what's so unique about Pro Image and what I think more people should be talking about than the name Pro and whether it's professional or consumer. And that's the fact that it's built for warmer, more humid climates. Here's a strange question that YouTubers don't usually ask their audiences, but um, what do you keep in your fridge? Because <laughs> I keep filming my fridge. Pro Image 100, I'm gonna pop that into my lovely little Canon Auto Boy Tally, and you can see that today's date is July 18th. It was in the fridge because I've been told that's where I should leave it, but I'm gonna shoot this roll over uh, a longer period of probably a month. But yeah, uh, anyways, let's go outside and shoot the first few shots on this camera. It's been a while since I shot with this camera. Picture number one was of that bridge. I hope it's good. Initially, it was exclusively sold in South America and Southeast Asia, so it's designed to be robust. Though, they still recommend on Kodak's technical data sheet that you should store this film below 21 degrees Celsius. You should probably leave it in the fridge. For best results, it's important to treat it just like any other film, and also get the film developed as soon as possible after you've captured your images. But if you're in a situation where you can't, you'll be fine. The latent image keeping capabilities of this film is absolutely incredible. I took four months to shoot a roll on this auto boy, living here in my hot and humid Gold Coast climate. And the images are great. I wish I could compare with another roll that I left for that long, but I'm, I'm never gonna do that with any other film. But I knew I could do it with Pro Image because it's built to last. And given that the colors and contrast and grain are great as well, the next time I travel whenever the world lets us travel again, I plan to bring at least a five pack of Pro Image with me. Because with it being built to last and the cost of the film, it just means that you don't have to worry about how you shoot. You just pick up your camera, take a photo and move on, which is what I want to do when I'm traveling. And yeah, as for pricing, the cheapest I have bought a single roll for was about eight Australian dollars. In a five pack, I've seen prices at around about seven Australian dollars per roll, but it really depends where you are in the world, what the film distribution is like. As ever with film, nothing is universal. It's really the luck of the draw with where you happen to live. Out of all the color films that I've reviewed so far on this channel, Pro Image is a strong favorite at the moment. It, it wouldn't be my top favorite, but it's my favorite budget film. Remember, my opinion is just my opinion. And if you have a different opinion or you wanna tell me something I missed or just help me out with my film shooting journey, please join the conversation in the comments down below. I never expected this when I started making YouTube videos, but the comments are really the, the best part of YouTube, or at least here on this channel. But yeah, like I said, it's a wonderful film and I strongly recommend trying it out yourself if you haven't already, because that's the only real way to know whether or not you'll like it. And at such a cheap price, I don't think you can really afford not to give it a shot. So so yeah, with that, that was my Kodak Pro Image review. Special thanks goes to the model Zoe for modeling and to Emily for organizing the shoot. I'll put their Instagrams in the description below if you wanna check them out. And my Instagram too, if, if you wanna check that out. Thank you for watching my video. Please make sure to give the like and comment and you know all the YouTube things. I will see you next time with another video, probably about film photography. If the links are working, there's a playlist right here that'll show you all of my role reviews if you're curious to check them out. Pro Image. So, since this video, I've passed 1,500 subscribers. I've passed, I've nearly, have I passed 1,600? It probably will by the time it goes off. <laughs>